This is the 2012 Chevrolet Volt. Now, Chevy and GM have dumped a whole lot of money into developing this electric vehicle and probably a lot more advertising and getting the word about what exactly it is. So why is it that no one I've run into this week knows that you could actually run it on gasoline if you need to? I'm Antoine Goon with CNET.com. Let's take a look under the hood of this 2012 model and see what makes it tick. Just remember, don't call it a hybrid. Now the Volt is actually a very interesting, potentially very efficient powertrain wrapped in a, what's in my opinion, kind of lackluster vehicle. This instrument cluster is kind of a cluttered mess. I mean, there's just a lot of text and images and just kind of tossed around here with what seems like little regard for readability or usability. I mean, heck, even the Prius's monochrome eyebrow is better looking than this thing. You'll be lucky if you don't crash this car on the first time out when you spend five minutes looking for the navigation button. Fortunately, you've got a couple of actual physical buttons here and there, and at the top of the display, you've got a nice touch-sensitive display. Now this seven inch display is actually kind of nice because it's good to be able to have that touch sensitivity when you need to, for example, quickly input an address or select a song. You've got your energy info screen here that shows you how green you're driving. You've also got a nice breakout that lets you know how much electric energy you've used versus how much gas. Now audio sources for this car's optional seven speaker Bose audio system include a USB port and an auxiliary jack in the center console here. You've also got Bluetooth hands-free calling, Sirius XM satellite radio, and of course a CD AM FM radio sort of receiver there. Curiously, you don't have Bluetooth audio streaming and that's made this Android user very frustrated this week. Now the navigation system includes traffic data and it's passable, but it's not exactly what I'd call good. Let's go into the point of interest uh, database here and look for fuel for this car. Now it shows gas, it shows biodiesel, diesel, uh, hydrogen, compressed natural gas, things that this car doesn't actually use. Nowhere in here will it actually show you charging stations. Now you'd think that GM would want that in this car if they want you to get the best possible fuel economy, but sorry, it's not here. Now under the Volt's hood is a 1.4 liter gasoline engine. Now, that may seem like a pretty low displacement for a car this size. I mean, this thing's about the size of a Camry, but don't worry, that's not actually turning the wheels. The wheels are actually turned by a 111 kilowatt electric motor. Now, that's actually twisting those front wheels to the tune of about 273 pound-feet of torque. That's a lot more like it. That amount of torque gets you pretty good pickup from a vehicle this size, and all of that torque is available from about zero RPM. Now, that electric motor gets its juice from a 16 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack. That's a T-shaped battery pack that actually runs the spine of the vehicle. It's actually the reason why you have two bucket seats in the back instead of a conventional bench. But don't call it a hybrid in front of a Chevrolet engineer. That kind of talk will get you wrapped across the knuckles with a ruler. This is a range extender electric vehicle. And that's basically because the gasoline engine isn't physically connected to the wheels under most circumstances. That allows the gasoline engine to run at an RPM that is independent of the vehicle's road speed so that it can get the best possible energy out of every gallon of gasoline. This is the Volt's electrical charging port, and this is the charger. It comes with the car. The gasoline port is actually on the other side so you don't get confused. Now plug this thing up to 240 volts of electricity and you'll get about 35 miles of range in about four hours. Now, if you drop down to standard 110 volt power, you can pretty much double that charging time. Right, now, one of the first things you're gonna notice about the Volt when you hop into it, when you've got a good battery charge going, is that it is quiet. Uh, that's what electric cars get you. I mean, just go ahead, take a second and listen to that. Nothing. This car, as I mentioned earlier, has got torque for days. I mean, even when you're in just a standard uh, mode, you actually have three different modes, a mountain mode, a standard mode, and a sport mode. <laughs> sport mode in a Volt. Uh, the sport mode actually gives you really good pickup. Now, one thing that I did notice is that once you run out of your electric power and that 
gasoline engine kicks on. It does seem a little bit loud. Uh, just, I mean, you can hear it, you can feel it through the pedal. Uh, it's just not a really good sounding engine. And because it sits at one RPM the entire time, it tends to kind of drone on. And one thing that I do not like about the Volt, do not like, is the brakes. And there have been more than a couple of situations where I thought, oh yeah, I'm giving it enough brakes, but the car just doesn't slow. And it leads to hair-raising, butt-clinching moments where you think you're gonna rear end somebody. The Volt starts at $39,145, but you can probably knock about $7,500 off of that price if you qualify for the full federal EV tax credit. Now let's get into those tech options. Navigation is $1,995. Go ahead and add $495 for the premium Bose audio system because these options can't actually be separated. All in, our as tested price comes to $44,170 before any sort of tax incentive. Ultimately, the Volt's value will depend on whether you have a home charging station installed, which you most definitely should because without daily recharges, the Volt only pretty much gives you about Prius fuel economy for what seems like a lot of extra money. 